Our Learning Futures Collaborative focuses on issues related to the use of artificial intelligence in educational contexts, and in particular looking at issues of equity and diversity and bias that can be inherent in some of these systems, as well as how they can foster or inhibit creativity in, in learning in other educational contexts. As computers and technologies and networks have become more and more powerful, we have seen the advent of really powerful software for machine learning and artificial intelligence. We can see examples of this all around us today, right? Uh, we can see them in the way GPT-3 algorithms, which can actually write prose in ways that would be indistinguishable from as one written by humans, by programs which create art, compose music. But there are other aspects to this because the way these software learn is based on existing data. So the quality of the data that you put in can have significant consequences on how these uh, systems behave. For instance, if you use uh, in the courts sentencing data from previous years in order to predict what the next sentence should be for somebody who has committed a crime, guess what? If your prior data is biased, and which it is, your AI system is gonna come up with biased results. And I think the implications for this for education are very significant because partly because of the pandemic and for other reasons, we now have huge data streams on pr pretty much everybody who was part of online learning and so on. And so one can see the value of AI systems. So one is, I'm not necessarily, we are not necessarily condemning them. We are saying there are spaces where they can be incredibly useful, such as identifying where students make errors in order to do more formative assessment. But the risk is also that we might take these systems to be neutral, not realize that they have these biases built in and use that to penalize students. The examples during the pandemic were, you know, rife. For instance, a student who could not join a proctored exam system because the AI system was not prepared to recognize a darker skin because it had been trained on people of a certain race. So these are the kinds of, I think, choices and decisions that educators and educational leaders will have to think about. And I think a large part of what our collaborative is trying to do is raise awareness about these issues, bringing people together to say, what does it mean if you bring an ethicist and a computer scientist and an educator together, what kinds of issues and questions come up that we need to be thoughtful about? So one of the strengths of this collaborative is the diversity of experiences that we have in the people who are participating in it or leading it. So for instance, we have faculty from the College of Engineering, Rod Roscoe, Scotty Craig, who care very deeply about not just the design of technological systems, but the impact on sort of decision making and biases and so on. At the same time, we have somebody like Sean Leahy or myself who come up at it from more of an ed tech perspective, thinking about educators in classrooms, educational leaders, what implications that have. And most exciting is somebody like Rachna Mathur, who's a doctoral student in our EDD program while running a series of STEM programs. That's her day job. And she is really interested in thinking about how can we develop media literacy in children so that they can think about these AI systems. I and mean, if you think about today, almost all our children's lives because of these devices we have with us are being driven by algorithms. A key part of media literacy needs to be children recognizing that the feed that they get through their Instagram or TikTok is very intentionally curated by blind algorithms. Those two things going together, intentional and blind, I think that's a tension that we need to unpack and better understand. I'm super excited to be both sort of organizing this LFC structure overall, uh, but also being part of one of the LFCs because, you know, as an administrator, that's some things you do there, but at heart, you are a researcher and a scholar. And so finding this opportunity where I can actually do both is, is quite amazing, honestly. And I think that also by being a part of this LFC, I'm seeing ways that it can be designed better by that other hat that I wear, which is trying to organize these things. So I think there is a wonderful synergy there which allows me to see that, oh, all those great intentions we had, they don't necessarily play out the way we thought it would and allows us to sort of tweak and redesign uh, the system to make it better. We do see these collaboratives as being something that we are trying and we understand there are some things we will get right and others we will not, and we will tweak and fix it. Because at the heart of it, as Betty said, and I truly believe, we have to change the way in which we think about research, educational research, scholarship, and sort of the future of learning. And once we have that goal in mind, once we keep that in mind, the rest of it can change uh, to make it better align and better support faculty and doc students in doing that work. <laughs>